Jesus. Make it bigger, make it better for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Something good will happen to somebody today. Lift up your two hands and bless the name of the living God. I appreciate the King of glory. Honor the Lord of lords. Magnify his holy name. Exalt his holy name. Honor him. Bless his holy name. I appreciate him for the privilege he has given unto you and I to appear before him on this covenant day of exemption. Give him all the glory and praise. Give him all the honor and adoration. Exalt his holy name. Father, we bless your holy name. We appreciate you. We celebrate you. Honor, praise, and glory to your holy name. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, King of glory. Blessed be thy holy name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Let's raise our voices and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, speak to me in this service. Speak to me directly. Speak to me specifically in this service. Let my own personal word come. In the name of Jesus Christ, speak to me. Speak to me. In the name of Jesus Christ, speak to me. In the name of Jesus Christ, speak to me. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' holy name, we have prayed. As we have said to God, so he will do unto us. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We are grateful for those amazing testimonies shared this morning. Even for the ones yet to be shared, we thank you. We give you all the glory for your mighty acts, your mighty works in our midst. Be thou exalted and glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, as we look into your, your word, Lord, open a new chapter to our lives via your word. Grant every one of us spiritual understanding. Speak directly to every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. Via your word in this service, save, heal, deliver, bless. Let everyone return with mark of exemption in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' holy name, we have prayed. Put your hands together for Jesus and you may be comfortably seated. Someone is ending this year celebrating. Yeah. That is actually for somebody. But if it looks like your own, you better respond properly. I say someone is ending this year celebrating. Dancing heavily in the name of Jesus Christ. It is my year of breaking limits. I saw the date today. No matter how you look at it, it's double, double, double. Have you seen it? Yes. Double one, double two, double twenty. For your shame, you will have double honor. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? Today, for your shame, you will receive double honor. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's start this way. The manual of life, the Bible, says that God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. The Bible says, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. All things given to us by God are accessible through knowledge. Through what? Knowledge. The one speaking there is the creator of all creations. He said he has given unto us. And he's the one that cannot lie. He said he has given unto us. But they are accessible, accessible through knowledge. That's what another scripture says in Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. They that do know their God. 
they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. So we need an insatiable appetite for knowledge. Insatiable appetite for knowledge. But we can only know more and more of him through his word. In John chapter 1, verse 1, he said, In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. If we know more of him, we can only know more of him through his word. The Bible says, anyone that thinks he knows, know that you don't know what you need to know. You need to know more. Come on, say, I need to know more. Say with me, praise facilitates fulfillment of prophecy. Please say it again. Say a big amen to you. That's why we are looking at this topic, understanding how praise facilitates fulfillment of prophecies. This is part 4B we are dealing with. How? We know some things, yes, but we need to know more. Numbers 23 verse 19, Numbers 23 verse 19, describing God there. He said, Numbers 23 and verse 19, God is not a man that he should lie. No, it's possible for man to lie. Neither is son of man that he should repent. It's possible for man to say something and come to repent. But that's not God. As he said, and shall he not do it? As he spoken, and shall he not make it good? So what he says is final. It's not a lie. It's not something that he will change his mind later. Someone shout hallelujah. God speaks according to what he will and can do. What he will do and what he can do. That's why prophecies are defined as sworn verdict of God. Ordained to be fulfilled on the earth. He told Abraham, Genesis chapter 22, verse 17 to 18. He said that in blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. And as the sun which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gates of, the, of his enemy. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Somebody will enter into the realm of sworn blessing this week. Amen. If that is you, let your amen show it. Amen. You will take one step and God will release a sworn blessing to you, amen. to your family, and to your generation. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sworn verdict of God. He said, the Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have proposed, so shall it stand. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 24. But just like we have been emphasizing, faith comes by hearing and hearing. Prophetic word must be received first so that it can be fulfilled. It must be received first so that it can be fulfilled. In Luke chapter 8 verse 11, we saw in scriptures that the word of God is referred to as seed, seed, seed. So the seed must be received so that it can be fulfilled. And how, where do we receive the seed? Again, faith comes by hearing and hearing. Luke chapter 8 verse 15. The heart of man is the ground with which we receive the seed. So the heart must be good. The heart, heart must be honest. The prophetic word come, receive it the way it is. 
the way God has said it. Not scorning it. No mocking it. No reading meanings to it. If God says, I will bless you before 12 noon today, don't begin to check time. Oh, it's already 11.52 now. If it will happen, it should have happened. That's not an honest heart. Receive it the way it is. The way God has said it. Allow God to do what he has said. If you are come and see here. Yeah. And every prophetic word received keeps the zeal of God burning in our heart. To prove that we have received prophetic, prophetic, you, prophetic word, the zeal of God will be burning there. It was captured concerning David in Acts chapter 2, verse 30 to 31. Acts chapter 2, verse 30 to 31. He said, therefore, being a prophet, talking about David, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of his fruit, of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he will raise up Christ to sit on his throne. And he said, he is seen this before, spake of resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. And look at the man called David. Everything about him was the word, the house of God, the word, the house of God. He once said, I will speak of thy testimony before kings, and I will not be ashamed. Psalm 119, verse 46. I rejoice I that was. Psalm 119, verse 162, 164. Seven times do I praise my God. But then you get to even Psalm 84. Ah, he said, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. Our Mebu is a tabernacle, oh God. You know what was happening to him? He received the word. The word fired the seal inside him. Psalm 69, verse 9. For the zeal of the house has eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are falling upon me. Someone shout hallelujah. So if you truly receive the prophetic word, it will fire up the zeal inside you. The world will be pushing you. Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 2. The spirit entered into me when he spake unto me. And the spirit now is now moving me. Someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. People of God, you can't receive the prophetic word and become. No. Just like we said before, some many people hear the prophetic word. Very people, very few people actually receive. But you are receiving, Amen. and the prophetic word will find an expression in your life. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, how many of us know that no evil will come near you? Amen. Hear me and hear me well. No evil is permitted to come near your loved ones. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Again, I need to mention this to every one of us. Panic is also being sold again now. In wholesale. Panic and fear. Wholesale. But as the law lives, you are seeing the end of all this row yeah. with your testimony yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Coronavirus is not for you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Not for your loved ones. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. You are ending 
November 2020 with your breaking limit testimonies. Amen. You are entering into Shiloh with your outstanding miracles. Amen. You are entering the year 2020 dancing, celebrating, Amen. giving glory to God Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. No one will have any reason to say sorry to you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you release, receive, come on, say, I receive. receive. Ezekiah was an example of prophecy fulfilled through praise. Ezekiah was sick. Was saying jokingly in the first service that he was like in the ICU of our day today. And prophet. Isaiah appeared. You thought prophet Isaiah came to pray. No. He wasn't there to pray. He was there to declare death sentence on Ezekiah. He told Ezekiah, Ezekiah, <laughs> if you didn't sign the will before, tell them to bring the will so that you can sign it now because you are not coming out of this sickness. And Ezekiel, King Ezekiel, King Ezekiel turned to the wall and prayed, Oh Lord, I should not be denied of the residue of my days. And God sent the same Isaiah back. Go and tell him that he's not going to die again. <laughs> this is where we are going. He was still in the ICU. By the time you get to verse 20, verse 20, Isaiah chapter 38, verse 20, he said the Lord was ready, not that he has saved him, was ready to save me because he has spoken it. I received the prophetic word. He said it even though the pains are still there. I couldn't still move my body. Everything looks down. But the Lord was ready to save me. He said, therefore, I will sing my song. So he pressed his way into the fulfillment of prophecy. That is a very powerful instruction to every one of us. Just like Ezekiah did, we are expected to do. Someone shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ezekiah could have even started murmuring after the prayer. You know, there are many kinds of prayer that we pray that is actually murmuring before God. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. They say it's breaking limit. I've not seen any limit broken, no. I've not seen, in fact, the limits are getting thicker. But he said, the Lord was ready to save me. I will praise him. I will sing my song. Somebody will sing his song. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. So, to see prophecies fulfilled, believe God. Believe what? God. You can't actually praise his word if you don't believe him. Because the situation had not changed. Still remained. His healing was not instant healing. You know, God has the right to do it any way he wants to do it. There is instant healing. As the prayer is even prayed, even before the, prayer, before the person says, Amen, the healing is done. His soul was not instant. He had to praise God. And saw the prophecy fulfilled. So believe God. Come on, say, I believe God. I believe God. Luke 1 45. Blessed is she that believes. For there shall be a performance of those things that were spoken from the mouth of the Lord. There shall be a performance for you. Amen. Who will have a testimony this week? Somebody will have a new job this week. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, someone will have a kind of breakthrough you have never seen before this week. 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your breaking limit heritage that has been head bound before is released right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Someone will receive favor from unusual places this week. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. So, not just believe, praise God for his word to demonstrate that you believe. Praise God for what? In, uh, in Psalm 56, verse 4, he said, In God will I praise his word. Because in, in God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. And repeated in verse 10, In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. So keep praising God. He is too faithful to fail. Ezekiah got it, you will get yours. In the mighty name of Jesus. I said, Ezekiah got it, you will get yours. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Take note of this. From now, set aside time to dance before him, even at home. Are you there? Dance before him. Even on your bed. Sing aloud unto him. To the praise of his holy name. Someone's story is changing for the better. Today is our covenant day of exemption. We serve the God of exemption. He exempted the Israelites from the plagues that came upon Egypt. And he said, I am the Lord. I change not. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. For instance, gross darkness which connotes lack of direction, stagnation, frustration, and despair came upon Egypt. But the Israelites were exempted. Now, what is happening right now could be termed to gross darkness all over the world. Frustration everywhere. But you shall be exempted. Yeah. I say you shall be exempted. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Then came the plague of sudden death. Of course, we know it better right now. But you shall be exempted. Yeah. Exodus chapter 12 verse 29 to 31. The Israelites were exempted. No single death. I think we should look at Exodus chapter 9, verse 4. And that is what will happen to somebody here. Amen. And the Lord shall severe between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt. And there shall nothing die of all that is the children's, the, the children's of Israel. Nothing good around you shall die. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. No death around you. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your business will not die. Yeah. Your career will not die. Yeah. None of your loved ones shall be buried. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And you will not die. Yeah. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now quickly, how to exercise our exemption rights. We just look at like three points there, then we take it from there. Because we must demonstrate what we are hearing. Number one, engage with the covenant of seed time and harvest. Engage with the covenant of seed time and harvest. In Exodus chapter 8 verse 22, Exodus chapter 8 verse 22, the Bible says, as while the earth remained, seed time and harvest 
and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Now, let's look at it from two different perspectives. The covenant of seed time and harvest, the covenant of prosperity is anchored on giving. On what? Giving. Giving. You want to give, you must, you want to receive, you must give. I think this scripture was read to us, a scripture was read to us in the course of uh, 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 offering. Luke chapter 6 verse 38. He said, give, and it shall be given. It means don't give, it will not be given. Very simple. Now, the other side we are looking at is, any seed that you will not like the harvest, don't sow it. Are you there? If you don't like the harvest of a particular seed, don't sow the seed. Galatians chapter 6. Let's take it from verse 7. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Verse 8. For he that sweat to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that swear to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Sow the seed you like to see the harvest. And I tell you, good things will continue to happen in your life. If you believe me, let your amen show it. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 8, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 8, he said, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same, the same, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be, a, whether he be born or free. Oh, I have this word for somebody. The good thing stolen in your life shall be restored sevenfold. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two. Remain dedicated to kingdom advancement and divorce. Remain what? Dedicated. That means deadly committed to kingdom advancement and divorce. And what are those? In Mark chapter 16, resurrected Jesus told every one of us, no, not let us limit to what he told the disciples, no, he told every one of us. He said, go ye into the world, verse 15 beginning, and preach the gospel to every creature. Go ye and preach the word. And in Luke chapter 10, verse 1 to 2, he appointed other 70 also, and he sent them two by two. And by the time you get to verse 17, the Bible said the 70 returned. And they returned with testimonies that even devils were subject unto us. And Jesus said, yeah, I beheld Satan falling like lightning. Satan is still on a free fall, and will continue to fall. Amen. Your amen should be louder. Amen. And Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpent and scorpion and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You are exempted in the mighty name of Jesus, exempted from all evils in the precious name of Jesus Christ. The covenant of exemption is for distinction. Upon the believers. Upon what? The believers. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 17 to 18, he said, you will, he said, and they shall be mine, say the Lord of hosts. In that day, when I make up my jewels, I will spare them as a man spared his own son that served him. 
Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. The distinction of God shall be upon you. Amen. Not just exempted from, from evil. You are exempted from evil and you are distinguished for good. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Malachi chapter 4, verse 1, or to verse 2. He said, for behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. It's happening already. And all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day shall come, the day cometh, that shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts. He shall leave them neither root nor branch. But for you that fear my name, he says, shall the son of righteousness arise with healing is in, in his wing. Then ye shall go forth and ye shall grow up. Ye shall, that means you shall be making progress. You shall be consolidated in your progress. That shall be your testimony. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You shall be far from oppression. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 14, all through to verse 17. You shall be far from oppression. You know why? Because you are exempted from it. That shall be your testimony. Amen. Number three. Number three. Be sure you are in Christ. Be sure you are in what? Christ. Not just inside church building. Be sure that you are in Christ. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Anyone that is in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Be sure that you are in Christ. The covenant of exemption is a covenant for the children of God. You must be in the covenant relationship to, to claim and lay claim on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pastor, are you saying anyone that is not in Christ, God will kill that person? That's not what I've said. Anyone that is not in Christ is actually inside the cage of Satan. That is the truth. And Satan is wicked. He's called the wicked. I think it was, it was, uh, it was uh, 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 Dr. Jerry Savage that said, he said when he was not born again, <laughs> he said the devil didn't really bother him as such. He said the devil was preparing him for, for, for feast. He said, thank God. <laughs> That he found Christ. He did what? You see, in some places where they keep livestock, as Christmas is coming, they are feeding the livestock very well. Many of us know what I'm talking about. Very well. If the livestock makes a mistake, to think that, oh, yeah, they, 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 they so much love me in this house, he will soon find out. Because they want the livestock to be fat. If it's for sales, yes, more money. If it is for, uh -huh, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Satan is wicked. And after the fall of man, God said, man became dust. And God told Satan, dust you will eat. So legally speaking, Satan has the right to eat dust. And the dust are those that are outside the fold. So we must be sure that we are in Christ. I see somebody's story changing for the better today. If you are the one, let your amen show it. Lift up your right hand and bless the name of the living God. For the word that you have received today, appreciate him. Exalt his holy name, honor him and adore him. Magnify his holy name, celebrate him. Give him praise. Give him praise. Father, we thank you. Blessed be thy holy name, Lord. In Jesus' holy name, we have prayed. In a short while, we shall be rising up to praise God. 
and we're going to dance before him. And I see prophecies getting fulfilled right here in our midst. In the mighty name of Jesus. But before we do that, we must be sure that every one of us, we are in Christ. In that same book of Isaiah chapter 38, verse 19, Ezekiah said, The living, only the living can praise him. Only the living can praise him. And 1 John chapter 5 verse 12 describes who the living is. Anyone that is in Christ, the Son of God, has life. Anyone that is not, does not have life. So wherever you are, you want to give your life to Jesus. What a wonderful opportunity. Or you want to rededicate your life to him. That's where to start our exemption journey from. That's how, where to start our blessing in the kingdom from. So wherever you are, I'd like you to stand up to your feet. I'm going to be praying for you wherever you are. Just stand up to your feet. Stand up to your feet. Stand up to your feet. You want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. Stand up to your feet. And wherever you are standing, just wave your hand so that the, the, the uh, officials can see you because they want to put a package in your hand before we pray. Just wave your hand wherever you are and they will put a package in your hand. They put a, a package in your hand. You are connected to this service. You want to give your life to Jesus Christ or you want to rededicate your life to him? I'd like you to stand up by your system or your device, wherever you are. And in a short while, we are going to be praying. And we pray that prayer, you are going to be connected to Jesus and you are going to be in Christ. You are going to be in the covenant. And you'll be, you'll be able to assess all the blessings and the benefits of the covenant. One of them is having a fulfilled life here and another is reigning with Christ. Christ in eternity. Heaven is real. Oh. Hell is also real. But we have a choice. Choosing Christ is turning our backs on hell. So wherever you are, just stand up to your feet and lift up your right hand before God. Say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you came to this world. You died for me. On the third day, you rose again. Jesus, I receive you into my heart as my Lord and personal Savior. Give me the power to live above sin. Give me the power to live for you. Wash me in your blood in the name of Jesus Christ. Keep that hand there as I pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless your holy name for these precious souls that have received you as Lord and Savior this morning. Lord, I ask, O oh Lord God, for fresh grace to live for you. Fresh grace to live above sin. And let that same grace keep and preserve them to the very end. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory and praise. Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Congratulations. You prayed that prayer. Make sure you complete the card given to you and turn it over to the kingdom friends. And if you pray this prayer in your home, wherever you are, just make sure you get to the salvation page on our website. Put your name, your email address, your phone number there. And we'll get back to you. We shall be helpers of your joy. And we know you will make it to the very end. In Jesus' mighty name. I'd like us to rise up to our feet. First of all, lift up your voices to heaven and bless the name of the living God. I appreciate the King of glory. Honor the Lord of lords. Magnify his holy name. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Thank him. Thank him from the depth of your heart. He said, the psalmist said, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him from the depth of your heart. Exalt his holy name from the depth of your heart. Magnify his holy name from the depth of your heart. Give him all the glory. Give him all the praise. Give him all the adoration. Father, we celebrate and appreciate you. We honor you. We adore you. We bless your holy name, O Lord. Thank you, everlasting Father. 
Blessed be thy holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In a short while, we are going to be dancing before him. Now, this is a session to demonstrate that we had, that we believe in what we have had. How many of us are trusting God for the fulfillment of the prophecies that you have received? Yeah, we are going to dance our way into it. And as we are dancing right now, miracles will be happening in our midst. Your own miracles shall be delivered in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be free to throw your legs, throw your hands. Now, let me show this to us. When we sing to God, I mean acceptable song before God, we are giving, lending our vocal cord to the joy that is within us. When we dance before God, we are giving expression to the joy that is inside of us. God said, let them praise him in the dance. Psalm 149 verse 3. Let them praise him in the dance. So as you are dancing before God, God is pleased because praise is comely unto God. It is good and it is pleasant unto him. And he comes down in the midst of that praise. That is a mixture of many scriptures. And when he comes in the midst of it, you are doing it with understanding. He goes up on your behalf to release your inheritances to you. We say it right now. Why are you said? Let's go. I will rejoice and be glad in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad. I'll lift up my voice and sing praise to the Lord. This is the day. Hey! 
Break the healing. Break the old healing. Security. Security. We are, are the righteousness of God. Oh, yeah. 